Hello and welcome back to another Wally rant. Yes, I know it's been a while since you've had a proper Wally rant, but I woke up this morning and had all of these different ideas and thought, you know what? These would work in sort of some kind of series. So this series is going to be entitled In the Mind of God. Or, or, or something to that effect. I haven't quite worked it out yet, but it'll be something very close to that. Anyway, with all of that being said, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, the series is going to be pretty cool, I think. Uh, it will grow from this uh, first iteration of it. I was going to say the word incanabula, but then that would be ultra pretentious. And everyone knows that I am not so pretentious that I would use the word incanabula. After all of you guys get done working out what the word incanabula means, incanabula, incanabula, incanabula. Let us get into the video. Finger guns intro. ZZ's here. Let's go. Alright, so in this series, In the Mind of God, we are going to be going through uh, different aspects that are brought up um, in the Bible of God's personality and just examining them for exactly what they are. So the first one that I want to do is anger. And I think anger is kind of interesting. So let's get straight away into it. So first off, let's just go through when we're talking about anger, uh, I want people to know uh, in what I'm about to say that I understand the usefulness of anger. I understand that it can help you be more productive. I understand that it can actually induce optimism. I understand that it can uh, help people in self-defense situations. I understand that it can help you work through problems. I understand all of these things about anger, okay? I get it. 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 But the thing about anger is in and of itself, in my opinion, it's neither good nor bad. It's what you do with the anger that really matters. So you have this emotion and then what am I going to do about that? And that is the thing that I'm going to be really keying in on. So if you have something to say about anger, hey, great, let me know. But for the most part, we're going to be talking about the results or, you know, what you do with anger as according to you know the subject getting into the mind of god so i have a couple of examples that i want to bring up and then just sort of buttress i guess that's the right word uh, that up against what the bible and what christians in general or jehovah's witnesses in general think about anger so first off i want to talk about complaining so in uh, Numbers chapter 11 and verse 1, uh, it says, Now the people began to complain bitterly before Jehovah. When Jehovah heard it, his anger flared, and a fire from Jehovah began to blaze against them and to consume some on the outskirts of the camp. So, the Israelites were complaining against God and his response to feel his anger blazing was to send out a fire and kill people. Now, just to contextualize this and in this whole series, I think I want to do this because the narrative that God is basically a loving father, or I guess complex basically but god is a loving father and we are his children that is the mindset that i take when i read accounts like this so uh, imagine that you read this story in the news um angry father has enough of his children saying are we there yet i'm hungry i have to go pee he pulls over to the side of the road, locks the doors, gets a Molotov cocktail, and blows the car up. What do you think of that? Do you, in your mind, say, well, that's an appropriate expression of anger? 
I hope not. I hope there is zero percent of people that say that that is an appropriate and expression of anger. So now let's read that again. Now the people began to complain bitterly before Jehovah. When Jehovah heard it, his anger flared, and a fire from Jehovah began to blaze against them and to consume some on the outskirts of the camp. The crime was complaining. The result of the anger that resulted from the complaining was to burn them with fire. Some of them, not all of them. Is that appropriate? I, I, I don't think we really have to go too far into that. I'll, I'll just make another couple points before we sort of break this down. So, uh, let me just look at my notes here. Uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, first Chronicles chapter 13 and verses nine and 10. Um, the, uh, our King David was trying to move the Ark of the Covenant and the moving company that was hired in order to you know get the thing from point a to point b they weren't allowed to touch the ark so here's what happens um in verse 7 however they had the ark of the true god ride upon a new wagon from the house of a bin adab and uzzah and ahihu were leading the wagon and David and all Israel were celebrating before the true God with full power and with songs and with harps and with string instruments and with tambourines and with cymbals and with trumpets. And they came gradually as far as the threshing floor of Chidon and Uzzah now thrust his hand out to grab hold of the ark for the bulls nearly caused an upset. At that, Jehovah's anger blazed against Uzzah, so that he struck him down, because he had thrust his hand out upon the ark, and he died there before God. So here we have another example of God getting angry at someone doing something. So uh, this person, you know, they were tasked with I, I suppose it's with the tacit approval of God because he didn't like strike anyone down or tell anyone, hey, you shouldn't be moving the ark in this way, right? So th these guys are just moving the ark. They haven't been told otherwise. Uh, I might have my history wrong on that. So if I got that wrong, then just please roast me in the comments. That is totally fine. But anyway, irregardless, his this guy sees that you know the bulls become unstable and the ark might tip over so he reaches out and tries to stabilize the ark and he gets killed for that because of god's anger again is that an appropriate response to being angry in your mind is that an, an, an appropriate punishment someone trying to do good and them getting completely blasted for it i'll let you be the judge of that uh let's move right along to judges chapter 10 and we are going to be look going to be looking at uh verses six and maybe seven i think uh it says and the sons of israel again proceeded to do what was bad in the eyes of jehovah and they began to serve the Baals and the Ashtoreth images and the gods of Syria and the gods of Sidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines. So they left Jehovah and did not serve him. At this, Jehovah's anger blazed against Israel so that he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the sons of Ammon. So, the Israelites started worshipping other gods. Now, mind you, when it says other gods, if we are going to take the perspective that the God of the Bible is real, then we are forced to say these other gods are not real. <clears throat> so, if we are going to take seriously the perspective that the God of the Bible, you know, is real, then is real, Israel. Hey, that's actually kind of funny. Then 
whenever we read accounts of the Israelites saying, oh, well, we are not going to worship, you know, Jehovah, Yahweh, whatever you want to call him. Why would he be upset at them worshiping other gods? Because if he is the only true God, what's the big deal? So I, I was trying to think of a way to put this because I want to, you know, try and draw everything back to, well, what if this was a father? And the only thing I could think of was, you know, someone thinking, oh, the tooth fairy is real. And he was told by his classmates, oh, the tooth fairy is real. And some father comes along and is like, don't worship the tooth fairy. You do not put a tooth under your bed to some child. And, you know, he hears so much from his, you know, classmates and everything. It's like, well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, we'll just, we'll just let it ride and see what happens. And so he puts a tooth under his bed and the father finds it. And his response to that is to take the child and sell it into slavery. And not only punish the, his child, but his grandchildren as well by selling them into slavery as well. That, that's his response. In his perfect brain, he decides that the best response to a, a child believing in the tooth fairy, which he knows is not real, which is the same because God, theoretically or hypothetically, wouldn't, would know that these other gods are not real, and yet the, the Israelites are worshiping them. His response to that is, you know what? I'm going to sell you into slavery. Okay, so all of those examples were meant to basically say God's response to his own anger is kind of messed up. But it's worse than that. It's so much worse than that. Because the God of the Bible is meant to be omniscient. He is meant to know everything. Omnipresent, omniscient, all of the omnis are, <coughs> are applicable to the God of the Bible as far as people that believe in him go. So he knows the results of all of these actions, and yet he goes through with it. He knows before the person that is going to go stabilize the cart that he's not authorized to touch the cart and yet he's the one moving it he knows that this problem is going to happen and yet he just lets it happen anyway the only thing that i could think of and maybe this is it's not quite as extreme but bear with me it's i get frustrated at people that get angry when they get stopped at a stoplight and they're like oh i can't believe we missed this light you know just some angry jackass and in my mind, I always think, you, you don't know if you were going to make the stoplight or not, right? It, 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 it's a less than 50% chance that you're going to make, you know, that stoplight. And getting angry about it is therefore functionally irrational because you know, you know that you are not going to make every single light that you come upon in your life. You So getting angry at that is irrational because you know you will get stopped. So you've seen, you've already, you can foresee in your mind, you know, at a certain point in my life, you know, I'm, I'm going to get stopped at a red light. So why get angry at it? And why continue to get angry at it after you've had the previous, okay, so you, you understand what I'm saying here. God knows what's going to happen just like the person that gets angry at the stoplight knows what's going to happen. All right, so now we have the emotion, anger. In my mind, that's already irrational. It's already silly the, to be angry. But what does God do with that anger? He pulls over the car and throws a Molotov cocktail and kills all of his family or his children that are inside of it. Really think about that. Think about how immoral it is on how God responds to his anger. And then when you say, well, God always has a rationalization, you know, God has perfect judgment. God always does the right thing. You are sacrificing your morality to support this behavior. I'm sorry. 
if you want to say that this is a moral thing to do, to th- for a, a guy to be driving a car, get so angry at his kids complaining or get so angry that he gets stopped at a red light, that he blows up the car with the kids inside of it. If you can twist your brain in such a way to say, well, it has to be moral because the, the, the father is moral. I've known him my whole life. I, he's never done anything bad to me, everything, all the experiences that I know about him. I don't care. If he blows up a car with his kids in it and some of the kids die, that's totally messed up. So getting into the mind of God and what this whole series is you know, meant to be about is why does God act in certain ways in certain situations? What is his thought process? You know, what is going on in his mind? And can we try and put that into terms that are recognizable to us because we have before anyone says, well, we can never understand the mind of God. Well, we have in the Bible, these situations and these purported accounts of real life accounts that are, you know, how God acted in a particular situation, right? Sorry, this is unscripted. So sorry if it's a little choppy, choppy, but anyway, work with me. So we have these accounts of, you know, him reacting to his own anger in certain situations, and they're super messed up. Well, why? Is there a reason? Can someone provide me, the skeptic, with a reason on why God acted in such a cruel, ridiculous, silly way that if anyone else did it, you would say that person should go to jail forever. That person is messed up and they, they shouldn't be allowed in society because they cannot control their anger in such a way that they are dangerous to the rest of society and they need to be sequestered until such a time is reached where we have a reasonable amount of confidence that they are not going to be a menace to society anymore. That is how we have built our world that we live in. And yet when it comes to the Bible and when it comes to God and how he deals with his own anger, and mind you, these are just a couple of examples. There were hundreds of examples that I found where I thought, well, that's not reasonable. That's totally messed up. I know I've used the illustration before, but It's like someone getting puppies or cats or any animal or children and then being overwhelmed by how annoying it was to have them. So you put them in the bathtub and then drown them. That is Noah's flood. The the examples are right all the way throughout the Bible. And if that's God's moral standard and if that's how God operates and if God is an un changing person. And if he hasn't changed, you know, he's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. He's never changed. It's all there. If that's the case, then are you okay worshiping this person? So if the the guy that blows up his own children and some of them die with the Molotov cocktail for the sole purpose of saying, I have to pee, I have to go to the bathroom, Uh, Are we there yet? Are you comfortable, you know, testifying in a court and saying, defending this person and saying, well, you know, he really is a good dad. And, you know, most of the time, I don't think he should be thrown in jail forever, you know, because, you know, he's a good person. Are, Are you comfortable doing that? Because that is essentially what has to happen. Anyway, this has been one of Wally's fun rants. Woo! We're talking about God. We're talking about... I don't know why I do these things. So one last point that I would like to bring up is that of the Christian perspective. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, so that's the lens that I look through. But I think you can find examples of people using this in other circles other than Jehovah's Witnesses. But on their website, under Bible Questions Answer, they have a section, What Does the Bible Say About Anger? And it has this to say. 
The Bible teaches that uncontrolled anger is harmful, both to the person who harbors it and to those around him. Although anger must may be justified at times, the Bible says that those who continue to have fits of anger will not gain salvation. When you read the Bible, you time and time again, as I've previously said, come to a clear understanding of a God that's prone to these fits of anger. By his own rules that he set out, he wouldn't gain salvation. If he was put under the same tests that he gives to humans, he would fail. Need I say anything more? We know what the Bible says about the dangers of anger and how it's a bad quality. We know from our experience in life that anger in certain situations and how it is dealt with by the individual and the circumstances surrounding it can be omega dangerous. And yet when it comes to this, why would we just let God off the hook? And if you are God, and why is it okay for you to be angry? And is it moral? Or are you just someone that can do whatever you want and people have to accept it? Or you'll kill them. Because if that is who God is, I don't, I do not want to worship him even if he does exist. I would, I would not as a moral human being worship someone that would be like, Hey, don't get angry or you will get killed in thrown into a lake of fire or experience eternal destruction, you know, whatever your thought process is. But then I can get anger, angry whenever I want. I can kill children with bears. I can kill someone for trying to save, you know, this holy, I said, you know, again, this holy Ark of Covenant, my place of worship. I would not worship that God. And so the, the, the thought process behind this whole series is to just go down this list of different things, um, whether it's anger or, or fear or lying or the, the, you'll, you'll see as the whole thing progresses that there's so many instances in which God almost seems to like break his own rules and has no ground to stand on when it comes to morality. Anyway, this has been a proper Wally rant. I mean, when I mean proper, I mean proper Wally rant. So thank you so much for indulging me in another one of these uh, silly rants. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such rants, and uh, I will see you next time. Should we do some wicked stunts? Maybe I'll... I got these cards still here. Let's... This is off the top of my head. <laughs> that was an in unintentional pun. If I can make a tower. I'm a little teapot. Short and stout. Balance on my head with these cards. You have to subscribe to the channel. Can you see it? Uh, I'll zoom in and post. I'll try and move as close as I can to the camera, but it might take me a minute. Here. Ah! piss. Well, yeah, we'll zoom in and post and you'll be able to see it. Therefore, you have to like, subscribe, and comment. We'll see you next time.